dark matter. How does that fit into my model? Dark matter was postulated to account for evidence of missing mass or matter in the universe. It's believed to play a central role in structure formation and galaxy evolution. In other words, the visible universe doesn't have enough mass to explain the formation and structure of our universe. In fact, according to the standard model, 98% of the matter in the universe is missing or invisible, so they call this dark matter. Well, dark matter need not exist in my model. In my model, strange attractors cause matter to self-organize into the various complex shapes of stars and galaxies. It's the strange attractor that continues to bind these things together over time. That's why galaxies rotate the way they do, because the black hole strange attractor is binding the galaxy together as if it were one unit, and so it rotates as one contrary to standard model predictions. That's also why galaxy clusters don't fly apart as the standard model would have them do, because the complex strange attractor that caused the galaxy cluster to form in the first place is binding it together in that configuration over time. No dark matter required. In order to be a grand unified theory of the universe, I needed to address the biological world to see how it might fit into my model. Given that biology is a huge field of study, of which I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, I decided to go for the home run and investigate how DNA might fit into my model. If I could solve this, then the rest of biology should fall into place. Here's what I discovered. There seem to be two different types of DNA segments that appear to be mutually exclusive. They're called introns and exons. Introns and exons alternate in the pre-mRNA. The introns are removed and the exons are spliced together to form the mRNA. Exons are segments of DNA that code for proteins. Introns are segments of DNA that are not used or that are not needed to create proteins. They're often referred to as junk DNA because they have no apparent purpose. Here's what my model has to say about introns and exons. In my model, introns are the strange attractors of the system that cause the exons to self-organize or express into the pattern or gene being produced. Introns are no more junk DNA then black holes are junk collectors of the universe. Strange attractors are hard to see. They exist, but we don't know what they're for. We can't understand them, so we paint them black. We call them black holes and dark matter, dark energy, and junk DNA. In my model, these are all strange attractors and behave exactly the same by causing things to self-organize forming both the universe that we see and the universe that we don't see. Here's another interesting connection. Introns are only prominent within multi-celled animals and plants. Single-celled animals don't seem to need introns. As I discussed earlier, black holes, or strange attractors, cause space-time to divide. Since introns seem to be a requirement for multi-celled animals, in my model, I would guess that introns have something to do with cell division. Cell division causes increase in complexity in the animal, just as space-time division causes increase in complexity in the Mandelbrot set. Georges Lemaitre proposed what became known as the Big Bang Theory in 1927, although he referred to it as the primeval atom theory. According to this theory, around 15 billion years ago, a tremendous explosion occurred which started the expansion of the universe and the creation of all the matter that makes up all the stars and galaxies that we observe. This is the standard model and most commonly 
accepted theory of the creation of our universe. Fred Hoyle is credited with coining the term Big Bang during one of his radio broadcasts in 1949. Hoyle, however, was not a big fan of the Big Bang theory and instead argued for a steady state theory of the universe where he proposed the existence of something he called a creation field or sea field. His theory suggests that as the galaxies fly away from each other in the expansion of the universe, matter is created between and where more galaxies are formed over time. I personally can understand the idea of matter forming between galaxies as the universe expands. It fits in nicely with my theory and is something I can easily model using the Mandelbrot set, as I'll show you. As you zoom into the Mandelbrot set, what's happening is that space-time is dividing, and as space-time divides, more stuff seems to appear in between. Stuff appears because space-time is dividing in a fractal manner. Hoyle's creation field could, in fact, be a strange attractor. This remarkable image was created by generating a histogram of all the fractal dynamic fields from the inside of the Mandelbrot set. A histogram is a diagram where the brightest points represent the points that got hit a lot by the algorithm, and the darker points, or black points, represent the points that didn't get hit very often by the algorithm. I'm not sure of the significance of this image, although it does seem to have a Big Bang expansion of the universe kind of feel to it. This figure seems to fit better with a theory called chaotic inflation, developed by a cosmologist named Andre Lind from Stanford University. There's a theory by Andre Lind called chaotic inflation, which describes a multiverse in which expansion happens at many levels, causing multiple universes to form at all scales. In his theory, quantum fluctuations correspond to regions of rapid inflation creating bubble universes, making the structure of space fractal at even the largest of scales. Here's what Lind has to say about his theory. When I invented chaotic inflation theory, I found that the only thing you needed to get a universe like ours started is a 100,000th of a gram of matter. That's enough to create a small chunk of vacuum that blows up into the billions and billions of galaxies we see around us. It looks like cheating, but that's how the inflation theory works. In other words, it's easy to make a universe, not hard. When I first saw this image, I called it the Big Bang because that's what it reminded me of. However, it also seems to illustrate Andre Lin's bubble universes so precisely. The image itself seems to suggest a chaotic or fractal inflationary <coughs> process that may be related to the creation of the universe. The next image I'm going to show you was generated in a similar manner to the bubble universe image. Only the points from the outside of the Mandelbrot set are used rather than the ones on the inside. Remember, these are the points that radiate away from the Mandelbrot set. <laughs> 